Hello and welcome to English Digest. I'm your host Seb, and I'm Elsie. Okay, so we're going to be looking at a topic-based writing assignment today.、Mm-hmm. It's talking a lot about、um, personal changes or imagining a different kind of you. We're going to be talking about a bigger change today, though. We're actually going to be talking about imagining what life would be like for you if you were born a different sex. Okay, so today's dis- today's episode is going to take us through a lot of discussions of sex, gender, and、uh, talking in hypotheticals. So let's get started. 我们出生的时候啊，性别并非能由自己决定。但是呢，你是不是曾经幻想过，如果能够以不同的性别诞生在这个世界上，你的人生会有什么不同的发展呢？所以今天啊，要请你以 “What if I had been born a different gender” 为主题，写一篇至少一百二十个单词的英文作文。文章必须分段哦。嗯哼。We can't decide which sex we were born with or which gender, but we all must have imagined what our life would have been like if we had been born with a different one. Now, write an essay in at least one hundred and twenty words, two paragraphs, to describe your thoughts. Okay, so that was our assignment, and it's an interesting one. Have you ever wondered what life would be like if you had been born another sex, Elsie? Um, I always tell my friend. And family, that if I could choose, I would want to be a man in my next life. Hmm. Okay. Why would you do that? I think I wouldn't have to care so much about my appearance or spend so much money on it,、mm. like buying cosmetics and different products just to maintain my appearance. Yes, we definitely put a lot of expectations on women, especially with their appearance and how、right. they should behave or how what they should do. Um, all right. Let's take a look back at the prompt. We use the word "sex" here. Now, "sex," as you might already know, has two meanings. It can either mean "xing ai," as in sex between two people, or it can mean "xing bie." I find this quite interesting because in English, "xing bie" actually has two different translations. "Xing bie" can be both gender. And sex, and we often actually get these confused a lot when we're talking in English. A lot of native、uh, speakers make don't make the distinction between the two, but there is an important difference between sex and gender. Do you know what what this is, Elsie? I think I do. So in English, 当中呢，性别有两个单字可以表示，分别是 gender 和 sex。之所以有两个单字，是因为有先天和后天之别。So sex is biological. Exactly, you're very right. Sex is biological, so that means it has to do with your physical body. So your sex is the physical way that your body is either male or female or anything in between. Gender is different from sex. It's the cultural or social parts of you. When we talk about being a man or a woman, rather than male or female, we're talking about gender. Really, gender is how you understand yourself. If you feel quite certain that you are a man, then you are a man. If you feel quite certain that you are a woman, then you are a woman. Not everyone who is a man has a male body, though. You might be born male, but know that you are actually a woman, or you might be born female, but know that you are actually a man.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so to review, this prompt is going to get us to imagine that we were born with a different sex. That's an interesting idea because children often have very different experiences if they are raised as boys or girls. Okay, and that's actually one of the reasons for this is because、um, we are well. A term that we can use in English is that we are socialized into behaving in different ways. This is a theory with gender. So when you socialize someone, that means you encourage them to behave in a certain way. You put expectations on them. So just now, Elsie, you were talking about how、uh, if you were a man, you didn't, you wouldn't have to, you know, spend so much money on your appearance. And、uh, we could say that you have. Been socialized to feel that you need to put more、uh, of an effort with your appearance because you're a woman, and we expect women to, you know, look pretty and behave in a certain way. This is what we call socialization. 
。OK， 所以呢，有时候社会上给我们的期待会让我们想要去成为这个性别当中的特定的样貌。那这边呢，我们在假设语气的写法当中啊，是经常出现在大学职考作文的，像是九十一年的 If I won two million dollars in the lottery, I would help。还有是九十六年的，想象一个没有电的世界。九十八年的，如果你可以不用担心预算，随心所欲的度过一天。还有一百零二年也考到相同的哦。如果你有机会获赠其中一项产品，你会选择哪一项？这个假设语气的出现频率非常高，所以呢，这个英文作文呢、啊、是不可或缺的一部分。Mm、hmm. That's a very good point. Actually, we've been talking so much about the the theory. We need to get、right. into the grammar. We、yes. need to be talking about conditionals.、Uh -huh. You know, this assignment actually reminds me of a famous pop song.、Which、Have you、one? ever heard the Beyonce song "If I Were a Boy"? If I were a boy, if I were a boy. Like that? <laughs> yeah, I think she sings it slightly differently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know. <laughs> this song, actually, I like this song a lot. And yet, this song, you listen to it. 与现在事实相反的假设，你也都会学会哦，因为里面有很多这样子的歌词，像是有一句说 ，If I were a boy, I think I could understand how it feels to love a girl. Exactly. So this song is all about a girl wondering how she would treat women if she were a man or if she was a man. The idea is that men and women often have very different experiences and aren't able to understand each other. Do you think men and women are always different, Elsie? Not always, but、mm -hmm. most of the time, men and women are different. In my opinion, um, we look different and we think differently. Hmm. Okay. So what Beyonce is saying in this song is that men, because they have very different experiences, might not be able to empathize or understand、hmm. the way that、uh, women think or the way that they or what they are expecting in a relationship. Now we can have a really big conversation about this because lots of people have different opinions about、yes. that kind of idea.、Um, there's certainly not one way of looking at that. But I want to talk more about this grammar. Of course. 再来呢，我们要注意的是啊，假设语气当中用中文表示就是如果点点点点就点点点点。那中文的假设语气比较没有时态的差别，英文呢相对来说就比较复杂哦。那我们可以简单分成三种。第一种是可能实现的假设，第二种是与现在事实相反的假设，还有第三种是与过去事实相反的假设。Mm、hmm. Right. So you're describing the different kinds of conditionals. To write today's passage, we're going to have to have a good understanding of conditionals. These are grammar structures we can use to talk about things that will happen or might happen under certain circumstances. Unfortunately for you guys. Conditionals are a lot more complicated in English than they are in Chinese, because you know in Chinese you can just say 假设 you can say 如果 and those are your conditionals. In English, we have four different types of conditionals: zero conditionals, first conditionals, second conditionals, and third conditionals. So an easy way of talking about this is to say that the lower the number is, the more likely the situation is. So when we talk about a zero conditional, we're talking about something that always happens under certain circumstances.、Um, and if we're talking about a third conditional, we're talking about th something that won't happen but could have happened, basically. So, for example, a zero conditional would be if you heat water, if you heat ice, it melts. Ice always melts when you heat it up. It's never going to turn into something else. It's always going to melt. So, when you are talking about effect, you use this kind of conditional sentence, right? Exactly. We normally use zero conditionals to talk about science because science is full of rules and laws that never change. They are always the same. So we use the zero conditional a lot. Now there are some differences between zero conditionals and other ones, because when we get to the first conditional, we're now talking about something that will happen. Uh, if a condition is met, but we don't know that that's going to happen necessarily. So, for example, let's look at.、Um, I'm going to use this sentence a lot to give you a guys of, an idea of the difference. A first conditional might be: If you talk to mum like that, she will get angry. 
So to give you some context, if I'm saying that, it might be that Elsie is planning to talk to、uh, Mum in a certain way. She might be planning on, you know, being a bit rude to her. And I tell her, if you're going to be rude to Mum, then she's going to be angry. Okay, so that's a first conditional. We know that Mum is probably going to be angry in that situation. 所以呢，在可能实现的假设句当中，我们用 if 带出来主词，后面要加上的是现在简单式哦。注意，我们要加上的是现在简单式。就算事情发生的时间会是在未来，但你还是要用现在简单式。逗号之后呢，主词再出来一遍，才用到未来式 will 加。原形动词表示未来会发生的事情，或是呢，你加上现在是动词，那就会是表示事实。Mm -hmm, exactly. So moving on to the second conditional, this is again reducing the likelihood or the probability of something happening. So a second conditional is something that will happen in a less likely scenario. So let's use that sentence, that first conditional. If you talk to mum like that, she will get angry. We could change that to, if you talked to mum like that, she would get angry. So there's still a possibility that mum will get angry in this situation. But it's less. I think it's less likely that Elsie is actually going to be rude to her. So Elsie could be wondering about how to talk to her mum, and one of the options could be to be rude to her. And I'm saying, you know, if you do that, she will she will get angry. If you did that, she would get angry. Okay, so it's lowering the likelihood. 那这边呢 ，Seb 说到的是第二种与现在事实相反的假设。If 出来之后，一样加上主词，再来我们的动词要用的是过去式哦。逗号之后啊，再加上主词一次，后面你会有四种选择，分别是 would。Could, should, might. Would 代表的是呢将会发生的事情 ，could 代表的是可以做的事情 ，should 是应该 ，might 是可能。它们都是助动词，所以后面你要接上的是原形动词。Mm、hmm. That's a very good point. All of those modal verbs, would, could, should, and might, you'll notice are none of them are very definitive. None of them are very、um, high probability. They're all kind of saying it's possible. You're pronouncing. It's not. Definitely going to happen. So when you see something like that, you know that you are dealing with a second conditional or a third conditional. And that actually brings us to the last conditional we're going to be talking about, and the one that you're going to definitely be using. In this writing assignment, the third conditional. So when we're talking about the third conditional, we're talking about a hypothetical situation, so an imaginary situation that. Could have happened, but that won't happen now. Okay, so for example,、um, if you had talked to mum like that, she would have gotten angry. So there's our sentence again. When I'm saying it that way. We we've already had the conversation with mum. You know, Elsie's already spoken to mum, and she was very polite. But we're talking about it later, and I'm saying if you were rude to her, she would have been angry. She's not angry, but she would have been angry if you had been if you had spoken to her like that. So this is a very useful structure for talking about、um, for talking about、uh, gender in this and、um, sex in this. In this assignment, because we've already been born, we're imagining a different life if we had been born under different circumstances. So we need to use this third conditional to talk about an imaginary situation. 没错，第三种呢，就是我们这个单元着重的与过去事实相反的使用。那时态呢，要以过去完成式来表示哦。以本文的这个范文为例，当描述一件希望能改变的事情的时候，因为过去发生的事情已经是事实，因此呢，文章必须要假设过去这件事情并未发生，所以呢，使用与过去事实相反的假设语气。句型结构是、啊。If 带出主词，后面要接上的是过去完成式，也就是 had 再加上一个过去分词。逗号之后，主词再出来一遍。后面一样哦，你有四种选择 ：would, could, should, might。再加上的东西要特别注意，是 have 加上一个过去分词。
it's time to you to prepare an outline. An outline is a quick planning device that will help you get your ideas in order. It'll also help you from stop sp- from stopping. It'll also stop you from spending too much time writing about one part of your essay. So I always have a lot of trouble with this when I'm writing a big piece of writing. I might spend. Days on the introduction and write a really long, detailed introduction, and then I have no space to write the body、okay. and the conclusion. So,、uh-huh. writing an outline, I think, is a really good planning ad- ad device. So, let's take a look at the example outline in the magazine. So, as we normally see, it's got two paragraphs, and it gives us a topic sentence and some、uh, ideas that support that topic sentence. Our topic sentence, remember, is the first sentence in the paragraph that lays out or explains the basic idea of what of the point we're trying to make. So, our first topic sentence is: I finished reading the Art of Being Normal in English class last week. Oh, I know about this book. Have you heard of the art of being、uh, normal, Elsie? Yes, I've heard this book before.、Mm, I think is it a movie or it's, it's just a book? It's a novel. Oh, it's just a novel.、Right. Okay, I do. Th- I do know the novel is about、um, a transgender or two transgender teens. So、hmm. people who were given one、uh, biological sex and gender when they were children, but as they were growing up, they they realized that actually they weren't the gender that the society was telling them they were. They were so one of them realizes that they are a girl, and one of them realizes that they are a boy, and they go through a journey of coming to understand themselves. And kind of getting there, explaining this to their friends and family. So it's a really good book. You, I definitely recommend reading it. And so that's how the outline starts. I finished reading the art of being normal in English class last week. It then follows up by saying, I had no idea about gender before reading it. I have been thinking more about gender since I read the book. I wonder how my life would have been if I'd been born a girl. Okay, so this person goes on to make three statements: the effect that the art of being normal had on them,、um, uh, some reflections on gender, and then they go into the topic of our writing assignment. They say, "I wonder how my life would have been if I'd been born a girl." There we have a third conditional. Okay, so there's an example of how you can use it. 没错，这边呢，我们的主题句它是要用来触发。表示触发背景的，所以触发背景呢，在这样的作文当中相当的重要。是什么样的状况让你有这样子的想法？这边呢是借由在英文课上面所读到的一本书为背景，叙述自己呢对于 gender 性别议题的想法转变。然后呢，刚刚这个 C 句。I wonder how my life would have been if I'd been born a girl. 承上启下，接下来呢？你可以预期他会写到的是，他开始在思考，如果他变成一个女生，会是什么样的生活。So there should be some examples, right? Yes. So the second paragraph is all about expanding or giving some examples of this imaginary other life. The person says, "I'd probably be closer to my sisters if I were a girl." Okay. So there again, we have a second conditional, an example of the second conditional. If I were a girl, I'd be closer to my sisters. Okay. So then they go on to say, "Being a girl could be much more stressful." Okay, it seems like this person has some similar、uh, ideas to you, Elsie. That、mm. women and men have <laughs> very different experiences. They go on to say, some girls in my class say strange men on the street say creepy things to them. Okay, creepy things. We'll be talking about them more、uh, in a minute. One example of that is catcalling. It's basically when.、Um, Men shout things to women on the street about their appearance or about, you know,、um, normally kind of, you know, things about their bodies that make the women uncomfortable.、So、they might comment on, you know, them looking very sexy, things like that. So it's a kind of verbal sexual harassment, right? Yes, it's a verbal thing. Yes.、Mm. Mm-hmm. So they say that these strange men are saying creepy things to them, and that's an example of catcalling, I think. So they then go on to say they wish they hadn't walked to school on those streets. My male classmates and I don't have to worry about things like this. Okay, so they he. 
the writer expands on um, on on the different experiences between men and women, mm-hmm. and I think yeah, and and that is basically where we go with the outline, our example outline. 没错，所以呢，我们会发现在举例的部分呢、啊，我们的作者呢先讲了一个好处，也就是可以跟 sisters 姐妹们的感情更好。那接下来呢，作者就提到当女生可能有的坏处。So one advantage and one disadvantage are presented here. Mm-hmm, exactly. Okay, let's move on and read through our first and second samples and give you some quick writing tips that you can employ when you're going in to write your own、uh, imaginary scenario of being a boy or a girl. Basic sample. Last week we finished reading *The Art of Being Normal* in English class. If you'd asked me two weeks ago what I thought about being a boy, I wouldn't have had much to say. Since reading the book, though, I have been thinking more about gender. It made me wonder how my life would have been different if I had been born a girl. I expect that I'd probably be closer to my sisters if I were a girl. As it is now, I feel us growing apart because they're girls and I'm not. Looking at the outside world, on the other hand, I think it'd be much more stressful to be a girl. I often hear the girls in my class talking about how they wish they hadn't walked to school on a certain street because a man said creepy things to them. My male classmates and I never had conversations like this. Okay, so this example took a slightly different approach towards the assignment. Rather than focusing on what kind of person the author would be if they had been born a different sex, it talks about the different challenges that men and women face. We already talked about one, catcalling. The writer also says that it's more stressful to be a girl. What do you think, Elsie? I agree. I think it seems women need to be more careful than men, at least on the streets. Hmm. 在街上好像我们要特别小心，对不对？那这边呢，作文里面有一句话，他说的是 ，If you'd asked me two weeks ago what I thought about being a boy, I wouldn't have had much to say. 这个是一个与过去事实相反的假设。两个星期之前你问我的话，我不会有太多的想法。那再给同学们一个。与过去事实相反假设的例句哦。For example, if Janet had run faster, she would have qualified for the Olympics. 也就是如果当初 Janet 跑快一点，那她就有资格晋级奥运。Ah,、uh, it sounds like we're talking about third conditionals again. To reiterate, we use this when we're talking about possibilities that have already come and gone. One way that you that you can recognize a third conditional is that you will see the the past tense in one of the clauses. So, if Janet had run faster, had there lets us know that we're talking about the past tense. If we're going into the past tense, we're talking in the third conditional. We also saw another structure that uses the word. Wish, didn't we? Right. So, you know, we have a phrase that they wish they hadn't walked to school on a certain street. That here, we see the phrase wish plus the verb that, and the verb plus the past tense. Wish in this sentence means the hope of the past with the hope of the future. It means that the hope of the past is not in line with the present. So, how I wish you had not shown me that. Awful video on YouTube. 代表我多么希望你当时没有给我看那一支差劲的 YouTube 影片。嗯哼 ，Good point there. Okay, let's move on now to the advanced sample. Advanced sample. Sometimes I think about what my life might have been like if I'd been born a boy. This isn't to say I wish I were a boy or feel like I am one. I just think it's natural to wonder. Not only would I be different physically, with a larger body and greater strength, but I think my interests, personality, and people's treatment of me would also be markedly different. If I'd been born male, I would probably be more into sports and be encouraged to pursue logical fields like math and science. I'd be less likely to do things like cross my legs or spend a long time on my appearance. 
It seems that boys don't have as much pressure to look attractive as girls do. What's more, their choices are questioned less often, and their opinions are taken more seriously. That level of freedom and respect is truly enviable. On the one hand, there are many ways in which boys are limited that I, as a girl, am not. Had I been raised male, I'd likely have been taught to suppress my emotions and act tough when things got hard. I might be ridiculed or scorned for doing things like wearing makeup or for having a female partner who makes more money than me. Being forced to act manly can really be hard on some boys, just as expectations of being feminine and pretty cause hardship for some girls. To me, they reflect two sides of the same problem of gender inequality. Okay, I really like this sample. It makes a lot of very good points. I do too. You know, we can t- actually talk about the problems of gender that both boys and girls face. So one problem that we don't talk about a lot that boys face is that they're encouraged to always suppress their feelings. We saw that word suppress, which means to ignore,、uh, to not deal with. Because、right. if you show your feelings, then you're being, you know, very feminine or very girly. So 男生都会被要求要压抑他们自己的情感。Exactly, exactly. Don't show your feelings,、um, and it also deals with the problems that girls face too. So both girls and boys face problems because of gender inequality. The girls again are being expected to be attractive and to behave in certain ways. We saw a couple of good words here,、uh, which I want to outline. One is enviable, which is something that makes you feel jealous. So an enviable job, for example, is a job that everybody wants but few people have. An example of that would be: Yvonne has an, an enviable new job as the head of a famous fashion magazine. I'm sure a lot of people would want that job. So, enviable 这个形容词代表令人羡慕的 Mm-hmm. Exactly. Another word we can look at here is ridicule. So when we ridicule something or someone, we make fun of it or them in a cruel way. Now, ridicule can be a verb or a noun. Um, and in both terms, it means to you know to be mean to someone, to make fun of someone. So an example here would be the mean teacher ridiculed Amy for getting the easy math question wrong. So this word means to ridicule, to mock, and it's in a cruel way, using a cruel, 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 cruel way. Okay, so there's also a couple of grammar points we need to check here, which both have to do with the third conditional. 没错，所以呢，我们有一个句子是 Had I been raised male, I'd likely have been taught to suppress my emotions and act tough when things got hard. 这边呢是过去。与过去式相反的假设，而且把连接词 if 省略，再把句中表示过去完成式的助动词 had 移到句首，变成了倒装句。嗯哼。再来呢，还有一个很重要的用法哦，我们可以说 if it had not been for， 或者是 had it not been for， 加上名词或名词片语，逗号之后再加上主词以及一个过去助动词，也就是呢 would could should might 选一个，再加上 have 以及一个过去分词，它可以表达什么呢？它可以表达要不是或是若非，那也可以用 but for 或者是 without 取代。So for example.、Mm-hmm. If it had not been for my seatbelt, I would have been seriously injured in a car crash. Exactly. So without my seatbelt, I would have been seriously injured in the car crash. All right. Okay, we've given you a lot to think about with this assignment, so I'm sure you guys are raring to get going. So we will let you get started on your assignment, and we will join you again later in the month for more exciting articles. For English Digest, I'm Seb. I'm Elsie, and we'll speak to you again soon. Bye. Bye.